I've been reading your book and quite often we have authors on here and I think this is a very rare occasion when I can say, I can't put it down. Oh, well, thank it you It is so much. absolutely extraordinary. Well, we've got something in common, haven't we? Because you met my husband. I did meet your <laughs> husband twice <laughs> and... It's a good job I met you before the show in makeup because I could clear this with you in advance. He was incredibly bizarre. Well, <laughs> he was. I mean, can I call you out? Oh, please do. Well, I, I met him on holiday yeah. in um, St Lucia. Yes. And I went to his house and had a few drinks with him. And then the next time I met him, he was um, in charge of a very beautiful hotel. I thought you were going to say elephant. <laughs> the elephant was coming up, is coming up because I was having dinner, not wishing to name drop, but you do in your book. Oh, of course, yes, I don't know. Well, uh, I was having dinner with Brian Ferry and your husband pitched up with the baby elephant. Oh, with Booper. Booper. Oh, well, Bonnie Booper Booper. did a yeah. giant Booper. <laughs> <laughs> By our dining table. Well, she was inclined to do that. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I loved her because she used to come to the uh, my, when I was cooking or anything. She used to come and put her trunk through the window, <laughs> and I used to give her a banana. Uh, but I, I, I always had to have bananas there because I don't know what would have happened if I hadn't had a banana. <laughs> She'd probably gone for my hair or something. <laughs> <laughs> now you you might have um, noticed when we showed the, the little little film just a second ago of. Beautiful pictures throughout your throughout your life. There's a picture of the Queen's coronation. On the whole, our parents were friendly with um, the Queen Mother and the late King. And my mother was um, a lady in waiting. She'd just been asked to be a lady in waiting, and so we were the only mother daughter in the procession. My mother was walking just behind me, yeah. and we dressed together, which was all about. Oh, how wonderful! And I remember waking up. It poured with rain that morning, um, but I remember waking. I was sleeping on the floor because it, London was packed. There wasn't a, a room to be yeah. had, and uh, I, I saw. Old uncle lent us his flat with one bedroom. So my mother obviously had to the bed and I had the floor. Um, and I remember waking up and seeing my coronation dress, which was so beautiful. Because during the war, you know, it was still rationing. I really want to ask uh, you about the series The Crown. Oh, yes. Obviously, well, what, how... Well, I've never watched it, but... Oh. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, occasionally. Yeah. I, wa I watch the coronation bit. But I live in the country and we've got no broadband. Very... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, I, I, but you have I, been portrayed never, but, but in But it. what I find so strange, I, I haven't even got a mobile. I mean, I've got no followers. Oh, how lovely. I, uh, <laughs> at, uh, at all. You're going to have this. You are, because you'll have a lot after this. this. Yeah. Well, um, uh, because of this book, which I'm amazed, I can't believe that I could have written, which is actually very nearly a bestseller. I'm going to... Good for you. Well, Janet uh, thinks uh, it should be a film. I think, I think, think your you life would be, would be a film. It would be... Part comedy, part tragedy, well, and part I can't believe this woman has agreed to this because one of the most extraordinary stories in the book is that you're, you, you reached the early 20s without getting married because you were engaged and then you got cruelly you know, dumped. It dumped, yes, by all. Uh, yes, then you have to go off and your mother makes you go and flog China. <laughs> her, her pottery, and you're driving around Britain in a van selling well, and, pottery. Well, I was the only uh, travelling salesman, a woman travelling salesman, uh, on the circuit. And uh, I was in all these really grim travelling salesman hotels that smelt of cabbage and, <laughs> and, and, and old cigarettes. And I used to sit there rather nervously reading a book, and all these travelling salesmen come in. They start a sort of conversation with me. And then, of course amazed when they realised who I was. And then a trolley would come in at 9 o'clock in the morning, at night, and they'd always say, will you be mother? And so there I was being mother. <laughs> <laughs> which was obviously wonderful training. Uh, as you say, you, you became uh, Lady-in-Waiting, which is the name of your book, to, uh, to Princess Margaret. But um, I, I, I wanted to sort of ask you, first of all, we, we touched on, on the crown. The reason that this book came about was because Helena Bonham Carter came to ask you advice on um, her portrayal on playing Princess Margaret. And you sort of, as you were obviously telling her stories about yeah. her life and that sort of thing, well, it sort she... of encouraged you to write all this down. Yeah, it was lovely, because, in fact, I knew her. She's a, a cousin of my husband. And her father was very helpful when my third son had a terrible motorbike accident, mm. was in a coma. Anyway, she said, can I come and see you? I just want to talk to you about Princess Margaret. 
And uh, she came, she's wonderful, and she's going to be the most perfect Princess Margaret. I mean, she's the right size, she looks right. A couple of years ago, Craig Brown wrote a book that was all these things, all these stories about Princess well, Margaret. Well, that's partly why I wrote my book. Yes. Because his book, I was so angry yes. with his book. It was so untrue, he didn't know her. And what I really mind is people who write all this rubbish about people like Princess Margaret when they've never even met them. And I, you know, she was such a friend. She was so wonderful to me. What do you think was the most in, a misunderstood aspect about Princess Margaret? When she was going to stay with somebody, they'd ring me up. Then I could tell them, um, A, what she liked to eat, what, what she might like to do. But if they didn't, quite often they didn't. And there for Sunday lunch was the bishop and the chief of police and the, all the people that she used to have to meet during the week. Right. Of yeah. doing, you so know. she just wanted to have a nice, relaxed time. Yeah, she yeah. feel like she was at work. And I mean, when she came to stay with me, she bought her marigold gloves, uh, a, a great treat. Was... Princess Margaret in marigolds? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, well, so other other brands of washing up gloves are available. <laughs> she, she said, I, I'm, um, she said I, I, I was a girl guide, you weren't her. You don't know how to lay your fires. She laid all my fires. Uh, she washed my car. Love washing my car. <laughs> I oh. hated washing my <laughs> car. Uh, and, and out with, with, with a bucket. And, no. And and then weeding, she bought her own weeding mats. We used to weed together. I mean, that you know, she I, I, to me, she was absolutely the best friend I've ever had. Oh. And we used to laugh so much. Mm. I mean, she's so funny. And we went I, I, when I first became a lady in waiting. Uh, the first trip I went was abroad. I went to Australia with her, and um, it was. Oh, wonderful. We had such fun. We laughed so much. May I ask you what your take is on the modern royals, William, Kate and Harry and Meghan? Well, I knew you were going to ask me that. <laughs> 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 I was waiting for it and I've got all my... No. Well, um, it was interesting, cos we had this marvellous nanny called Nanny B um, Barbara Barnes and when my children were grown up and um, go on to school, um, uh, I said, why don't you go along? Cos uh, I knew that uh, Princess of Wales was looking for a nanny. And I think uh, Princess Margaret, who knew Bob very well, had also recommended her. Anyway, the long and short it was, she was engaged to, to look after William and Harry. So I used to see them, of course, when they were, when they were little boys, and they, was, they were charming and, uh, and, you know, very loving together, you know. That's why I felt it was rather sad, this interview the other day. Mm. Well, your book, Lady in Waiting, is available to, to buy now. And who knows, it may even, may even be, by the end of this lunchtime, a bestseller, which, <laughs> yeah. which we hope it is. <laughs> we hope it is. Thank you so much for joining us.